if you are looking for tips how to set up the best buttons for Astro Corsa Competizione, well, you are in the right place. Hello fellow sim racers and welcome to this video. My name is Jar here and in this video I will show you my Fanatec button settings for the wheel which I'm using and overall Fanatec settings that I'm using for Assetto Corsa Competizione. For the video purposes I will be using my new Fanatec Club Sport 2.5 wheel with the leather grips which I really wanted for quite some time now and Fanatec was so nice to send me the new one as a replacement for my Club Sport 2.0 which is fantastic but it has around three to four thousand hours already and it's a bit hammered down you know so uh, yeah for this video purposes we will use the new wheel. So now I would like to go through like most important buttons for Acero Corsa competition in 2022 and the buttons I'm using and why am I using them and it doesn't matter what wheel I'm using guys you may maybe apply them to whatever kind of wheel you're using you know whatever brand you're using. I prepare a little scene for this so we can go through it and we're gonna put it on a track like that so we can see the game changes and we can see the wheel changes you know I will try to enlarge it and everything so for you it's gonna be the easiest. So um there are several important buttons you have to have in the game and I would like to start with the basics when you're leaving pits basically. I have the ignition button that will turn on the ignition and then start the button. This is like basically the the main stuff you have to have in Acero Corsa Competizione to start your engine. Very simple I know but uh, it's important to have mapped these buttons because especially for pit stops and such it really really works very well because you can have it automated but this is faster. So obviously the shifting when we leave the pits, uh, if necessary guys, I have a pit speed limiter. It's literally the first button here in the middle. Very, very easy to use. Uh, most of the servers are running like automatic settings, so you don't have to worry about too much of the pit speed limiter. I have the automatic. I think it's very foolproof. Literally 90% of the servers are using automatic or allowing automatic pit limiter. So in ACC you just go, you drop to first gear, you have to drop to the first gear, you go into the pit, and then when you're leaving the pit, it turns off. You can be a little bit faster using the manual, but it's also a bit more riskier, okay? So be careful with that. Right after ignition start turn, uh, and other important buttons, I have all the way to the left, I have look left, all the way to the right, look right. Very simple, nothing to talk about. And then we are going to a little bit more important buttons. For me, there's a TC up. I have a, on this wheel, it's really nice because you have so many buttons. I have a roller here that increases TC up and down. If I roll it up or down, it's going TC up and down, you know? So when I'm driving, I can just roll up, roll down, nice and simple. AB, sorry, the TC is very, very important in Acero Corsa Competizione because if it starts raining during the race, if your tires are worn out or something like that, or you would like to preserve the tires a little bit, you want to increase the TC. If you are in a quality, you want to lower the TC. So it's nice to have it very close in hand. On the other side, of for the, another roller, I have the same thing for brake bias. Basically to increase brake bias and lower brake bias. It goes exactly the same with the TC. Um, at the beginning of the race, I can go more aggressive, for example, more brake bias in the rear. If I'm wearing the tires or the car is a bit more unstable, I just go into the front, you know, or the other way around. Same when it goes in the rain, you know, if it starts raining or stuff like that, in the rain you want to go with the brake bias all the way back as much as possible so you don't lock up the front wheels, you know? Yeah, so that's basically this. TC, ABS, super important, sorry, T TC, brake bus, very important. Talking about ABS, I have a button for this, is this one on the right. Uh, I wanted to have it like somewhere far away, far away, so it's not bothering too much. Basically, I go this button up or down, and that's increasing and lowering the ABS up and down, up and down. Very simple, right? <laughs> very simple. Uh, then, what if it's a night race or you have to have a lights on or something like that? You can have it either automated in the game, but I wouldn't trust it 100%. I have a button for it in the middle. You just go press the button, uh, low beams, high beams for endurance races. And here, instead of a klaxon, I have my, uh, my flashlights because it's the most most important button for us at the Corsa competition, especially for endurance races or qualifying. <laughs> yeah. Then obviously, 
it's very nice with the fun attack that you, they, they give you these little things for the buttons. So, I put a wiper. I also use automatic wiper because uh, you can have it automated again, like literally everything you can have automated. But the, I feel like the manual is a bit better because, like, not always it's raining too much or not always, or too little, you know. So you can use it automate uh, manually as much as you want, and I kind of like that, you know. So if it's, I, I literally use low for any conditions, you know. If it's raining heavily, medium, whatever, I use low because I don't like the, sh sh sh, you know, on my screen all the time. So yeah, wipers, very important. Uh, then we go to a little less things important. Uh, I hope I remember all my buttons, by the way, right now. I'm gonna put neutral, sorry. Uh, I can change the dashboard page on these rollers, these rollers here. Uh, kinda nice feature, you know, kinda nice feature. I don't use that too much because, I mean, the main page is like already with enough, more than enough information for racing, but, you know, for some other cars, you have like way nicer uh, dashboard to to change it to you know on the on the right side I'm using the engine map buttons which uh, can be useful I mean when it's raining you want to change your engine map sometimes it depends on the track and your car you want to go to engine map that's for rain for example so you can use this roller as well as well and that's like the best thing you know uh, or if you want to save some fuel or I don't know whatever you know like in, in this is engine map is very very important for these uh, kind of things and then we basically go to the two latest things uh, I'm using rain line obviously when it's raining <laughs> try to be as safe as possible you know I I kind of like this button to use it as well to distract other drivers sometimes you know to, to be a little bastard on the track you know so when there's someone behind me just lighten the lighten the rain light and then the most important button in the game, guys. You have... I, I'm using here this joystick. You can press it. You can press it. And use up and down and left and right. And that gives you your MFD button. That will... Is for creating your pit stop or changing the strategies and such. So for that, I will show you in an actual race how it actually works. All right, the MFE bu MFD button, guys, is the most important button with the game because you adjust your strategies, your pit stops, you can also control your car overall, and so on, so on. I use it as a joystick. It's complete, so I can press it. I get the, I can cycle the MFD button in option. Cycle MFD button. So here you can change the ABS, TC and stuff like that. It's if you have like a wheel that doesn't have too many buttons, but it has a joystick, you can use this, you know, so because you, you can just you can change TC, ABS, brake bias, wipers, everything you want, you know. Uh, so there you go to your strategy window where you can select your strategies, add more fuel, change tires, change for wet tires, adjust the pressures and so on, so on. Good thing about the pressures, guys. Uh, not many people know it or not many people uses it, actually. You can obviously change the pressures like that. But also, if you have pre-selected or already prepared the, 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 the tires and such, you can just add all the tire pressures at once. Very nice and simple. Change brakes, for example, in a very long endurance race and suspension and so on, uh, sus repairs and so on, so on. So, very nice. I, I kind of like it because you can just cycle through it, you know, very, very fast. And uh, you can check your damage, for example, really quickly. Select your strategy. Okay, I need tires, I need fuel, blah, 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 blah. Not changing tires, taking just the fuel, uh, splash and dash and go. You know, the most important button in the game. 100%, guys. I really, really hope this is helpful, guys. Let me know in the comments. Give me a like, subscribe to the channel. You know, let me know in the comments if it's useful. Because you don't have to apply this for the Fanatec wheel. You can apply it for whatever wheel you are using. And uh, those buttons are very, very important. Then talking about the controls or the settings overall in the game, guys. So uh, this is right now. I was racing on a McLaren yesterday on a wheel. And in the game, I'm using 480 steering lock on a McLaren. I have 80 force feedback for the game. I'm not saying this is the correct play. My force feedback is clipping quite often. So definitely go on a forum, for example, to check what is the best settings or for Google. Go for the best settings that is recommended for your wheel and so on. But I kind of like how the car behaves for me right now, how much I can feel the car. So I'm using 80 gain in the game, minimal force zero, damper 10. You can play with this a little bit. I feel like, like 
zero is too little and 10 I feel like is like a correct way. Uh, I think Aris in one of the videos was showing like 40, 30. It basically what happens is it makes your wheel going like being heavier overall in the middle. So if you have like a dead zone in the middle or something like that, this can help with it very nicely. Dampening on 100 and yeah, that's it basically. Uh, then obviously you change the steering lock uh, by the car. I recommend using the same steering lock for the wheel and the game and basically each car differently. I can tell you that most of the cars 480 to 540 steering lock is ideal or very nice. If you go for a Porsche, for example, I recommend going for around 800. That's probably the best thing you can do with the Porsche. Otherwise, like 620, 540. It's, uh, sorry, <laughs> 540 is like usually what I'm uh, what I'm using. I said McLaren 480. That's literally the lowest I'm using on that car. So yeah, yeah. Basically, if you're wondering about the buttons, all the buttons are here. Very easy. If you're wondering about a cycle MFD, it's this button. That's what I have as a, as a gamepad. Uh, and then basically up and down, left, right, and so on, so on. So, yeah. I used to be having indicators on my wheel, but uh, this wheel doesn't have it. So maybe the thing I will actually do, guys, is with this new wheel from Fanatec. On the old wheel, I will show you actually, my old wheel has the advanced pedal module, it's super sick guys, with the carbon you have uh, two analog uh, these things which you can use, it's very good for eye racing for example, you can use it as a clutch, you know, and then I was having shifter and then I was using indicators, so if anybody was wondering how I'm using indicators on these advanced pedal modules, I was using right indicator, left indicator, turn it off and, and so on. I might actually take that advanced pedal module and put it on this new wheel because this also have a magnetic shifter, but just with the shifting. But I kind of like that it's empty, because on that other wheel it was quite annoying having so many things there for like Formula 1. But this is very clean, you know, so yeah, we'll see. I might replace it, might not. I guess we'll see. One more thing, if you're wondering, on my wheel itself, I'm using 40% force feedback. So my force feedback is quite strong, it really depends on the car and the track. Usually I'm using around 40 for McLaren, all around the tracks. But for example, with the Porsche, I'm going to around 30, especially on Panorama, where his feedback is very, very strong. So yeah, it's, it really depends what, what you prefer. I'm saying, I'm not saying I'm expert for force feedback, Absolutely not. I'm probably using completely wrong settings, but it feels very nice to me. So yeah, maybe it will give some tip to you as well. And I guess this is it. This is this is my buttons, settings, my best settings for for comfortable driving in Assetto Corsa Competition. Because for me, it's very important that I can just focus on a race, push the buttons that I need, you know, without thinking about it too much, you know, and or going on a keyboard and uh, looking like left and right what I'm supposed to do. I really, really like that I have everything on a wheel, I can just focus on the driving, look at my chat, you know, and uh, and just, yeah, just drive, you know, quite easy, quite normal, you know, just push, 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 boom, 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 and uh, yeah. So guys, let me know in the comments if this is actually a little bit useful. And if you have any questions, make sure to join our Discord for our huge, amazing community. And, uh, well, I hope to see you in the next stream or video, guys. So, yeah, make sure to leave a like and subscribe.